All right, it is it is finally time for the last job in the entire game of Exapunks. Uh, the last bonus job. We are back in Moss's shoes. And spoiler alert for the for the game, by the way. Uh, we have we have learned that the whole world that we're in is a computer simulation. In fact, they've learned that it is the game that we are playing, and they want to break out now. Uh, for some reason, we're going to help them do that. Uh, we, we are going to copy basically ourselves out into the internet. This, this ethereal cloud over here that I'm covering part of is the internet. And we're going to, we're going to send our, our whole code out there. Uh, but we have to make we have to make sure we do it properly. We don't want to get it, send out garble, gobbledygook and just put a mad version of ourselves out on the internet. So we'll have to do this responsibly. So in file 300, we have the name of a of the website that we are uploading ourselves to. It's going to be uh, in this case, it's a it's a Russian website, but it's going to be a random one. EU DZ. Yeah, it's a random website each time. Uh, and what we have to do is we have to take that website name and find the IP that corresponds to it. Uh, it's stored in file 201, the, the website names and their IPs. So we're going to send one agent. I believe XA is the one responsible for it. It's going to grab file 300 and read this name in and then jump over to file 201 and find the IP. And he's going to basically sit there and just keep announcing the IP for for our use. But what do we need to use it for? That's what XB is handling. So in order to upload ourselves to the internet, we have to take us. This is us right here. We are. We, this file defines us. Uh, we have to send this data in packets. So each one of these four digit numbers is a, a data value. And we want to separate this into chunks of no more than 30 and then drop those off in the in the internet here. But we can't just separate it by 30 and then drop them off and call it call it quits. We have to add three values to the front of each packet to make sure that the, the data is going where it needs to and that it is whole. The first thing that we're going to have is the source IP address, the, where it's coming from. That's just stored in the address register here. Easy enough. The second one is where it's go the IP of the address that it's going to. That's what XA has gone. He's gone over into 201, found the IP, and he's broadcasting it. So we can read that on the M register locally in this network host here. Step two. The third one is the hardest part of this entire job. It is a checksum. And so for somebody who doesn't know what a checksum is, it is a a value that is derived from the data. So you take the the code of a file and you'll run some kind of a function, usually some kind of a, an encryption function of some type or some kind of an analysis function on it that'll give you a number of some type. And the idea is that if you run this on any set of data, you'll get the same number if the data is exactly the same. And that's called that's that is called your checksum. So if I've got a whole string of data, I run a, a function on it and it gives me the value 99. The idea is that I would never get the value 99 on that function unless I did the exact same input data to begin with. And so what what people will do, well, like what a, a website will do when it's validating that your download has done has done so successfully is it'll have a checksum of like, I know that this is the checksum of what I've sent you. I'm going to now calculate the checksum of what you've received from me and they should match. That is how that is one way that they validate that you have received your downloaded files in in a whole uncorrupted format. So we have to calculate our own checksum here. And the function that we're doing to calculate the checksum is as follows. We, they want us to take each of the digits in these values, so up to the 30 values that's in your data packet, and add them up. So the first digit here is a 3. Next digit's a 3, that gives us 6. The next digit is a 4, which will bring us a 10, and we'll round that back down to 0. So the next digit is a 3, that puts us at 3. 1 will put us at 4. 8 will put us at 12, which will round back over to 2. We'll do that for all of the values in our packet. And then we have to do that for all four of the digits. So then we add the 0, the 6, the 3 to give us 9, and then the 1 to put us at 10, that rings it back down to 0. So it's not as, as simple as just adding up the values. It's adding the individual digits and then cycling it back to 0 once we reach 10. So we have to do that for all four of the digits 
and then we just have to negate the the result we have to make it negative so if, if we end up with four 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 as our answer then the checksum is minus four 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 after we've done all of our all of our math so now that we understand hopefully the problem let's get to the solution so you'll see the first thing is that xa is going to grab file 300 read the name of the website and is going to go and find it in file 201. that's not very interesting that's pretty straightforward let's take a look at what xb is doing because xb is the interesting one here so xb is going to grab file 301 this is all the data that we want to transmit and it's going to head over into here and file 200 just has some links it's not actually that important uh, I will also make a random note here is that these files here will uh, include like actual files on your computer. So these have some of my game, my video game <laughs> shortcuts or like on my desktop icons on there, like Deep Rock Galactic and Devour, some other games I've been playing. There's a P90X folder over here from when I was doing the, the P90X workouts <laughs> and a D&D &D folder for, uh, you know, because I'm a I'm a D and d nerd. I just thought that was a, a fun detail that I didn't even notice for a while. Uh, so we're going to go through and uh, we're going to packetize this. We're going to take chunks of 30 and put them into a packet. So the first thing that we're going to do is create. I'm going to call this guy the listener. He's he's here. He's going to serve a special purpose. He's, he is our our end our end case detector he's going to realize when we're done he I, I imagine this guy as somebody who's standing there with like a gun pointed at the head of xb because he's going to listen to xb transmitting data and the moment he realizes that xb is done transmitting the data meaning we've reached the end end of our list here he's going to pull the trigger and he's going to clean everything up and get it all taken care of and that's because we are separating this into into packets of 30 there's no guarantee that they will be in a nice clean uh, sets of 30. In fact, I think it only comes in maximum sets of six. I didn't use that information in my solution here. You probably could if you wanted to optimize this further. Uh, but there's no guarantee that it's going to be in a pack of 30. You could end up with a packet of 18 at the end. And uh, the listener, or well, let's let's get to the transmission. We'll talk about it. So XB is going to create another guy who's going to create a file. And he's going to quickly just put down zeros at the beginning, because remember, we need the source IP, the destination IP, and the checksum. So that's what these three zeros are placeholders for. And then it's going to read in, it's doing a T-loop to read in a total of 30 values from XB. But remember, because at the, in the last packet may be less than 30 values in it, uh, because we're doing a T-loop, he's not going to have any idea that there's no more. I could do a, like a, a mread test, and I think I did play with that, but I ended up with this solution instead. I can't remember exactly the, the problem I had with the mread. He probably could get the mread to work, but it was slower in terms of reading the data, and I was trying to get it reading the data f as fast as possible. So XB is going to transmit over 30 values to XB1, who's going to write them down. So we'll go until XB1 has taken in everything that it needs to. XB1 is now transmitting out on uh, on the global. So they were these guys were communicating locally. He's now transmitting on the global register like, hey, I'm done reading. The guy with the countdown <laughs> is uh, was listening for that. And he, he will wait uh, a certain number of cycles. I think it's like 40 something cycles, uh, which is the, the minimum amount of time it'll take for those 30 values to get sent over. But, and then he'll go and he'll be like, hey, is, is somebody done reading here? Uh, in this case, it is. So he's like, okay, I will go back to sleep and I'll check again to see if you'll finish the next packet in time. Uh, but he'll be like, okay, you get, you're good, and you have my permission to go and transmit this. So XB is going to go back into a dormant state, and XB1 is going to head over into our network host, and is going to fill in these three placeholder values. So the first thing he's going to do is going to grab the, uh, the IP address of our host, then he's going to grab the IP address of the website, which is being broadcasted by XA, and is then going to it's going to send it over its x value back to xa this is in our end case condition we'll talk about this again basically saying am i the last one coming do i have the last packet in my hands or should you transmit this again for the next guy coming through since it's a zero he's going to be like okay i'm going to transmit this again you see that you'll see this guy is now going to go and uh calculate our checksum so we're going to set x to zero 
The checksum was the hardest part of this whole problem, especially figuring out a way to do it in intelligently. And I found a way that was, and I, I got a couple of hints from other people who had done this problem, of a way to do this very quickly, at least quicker than I was. Because what I was originally doing was I was doing each of the four digits one at a time. And that, you know, took four cycles through the file, going through each of these 30 digits four times for each of the, of, of the files that we're doing. It takes a while. Uh, the way we figured out how to do it, though, is we can actually do two digits at a time. Remember that we can have up to four digits inside our, uh, our registers here. And what we'll actually do is the first two digits will be for one of our checksum digits, like one of the values, and the second two digits will be for the other set of values. Uh, and uh, it's easier to show this than it is to explain it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the first digit and the second digit and we're going to put it into X in this format using a Swiss. So it's going to be end up being zero, because if you put zero in a Swiss, it'll always just be zero. One will be the, the digit in the first place, so three. So it'll be zero, three, zero, and then two, the digit in the second place. So it'll be zero, three, zero, zero. So X will be 300, or I guess it'll go into T. We'll then add that value to our X, 300, and then we are going to basically blot out the thousands place and the tens place, which currently are already zeros, so we don't need to do anything with that. Then we'll check and see if we're at the end of the end of the uh, the file. We're not, so we're gonna do the next one. So let's let's do the next one. We're gonna add a six to the uh, to the end here. So we'll add the three to the three, and we'll end up with a six. And we'll add a six to the zero that's in the one place. So we'll end up with six oh six, I believe. So you'll see, we've now got a three. This is what represents the first digit of our number and the six, which represents the second digit of our number. And we're going to add those in. We now got 606. We still don't have anything in the thousands and the hundreds place that need to be reset to zero for the sake of remember in the checksum. If we get to 10 or more, we knock off the, the, the tens place and we leave it just the ones place. So, well, let's add the next value. We're going to add a 4 to 6, which that's going to become 10, and then we're going to add a 3 to the to the other 6, and that's going to become a 9. So we'll end up with 1009, uh, right? Yes. Now, we don't need this 1 here. We need this to stay at 0, because we don't want this to cycle any further. So we will set that 1 down to a 0 using this swizz. We immediately eliminate any values that would exceed past 10. So imagine that the X register is just two numbers that are being added together this way. The first two digits is one sum, and the second two digits is, is another sum. And this will continue until we get through the whole file. So we're going to add 301 to this. That's going to end up with 310. We don't want the second two digits to go past 10, so that's actually going to end up going back down to 300. We're going to get rid of that one, set it to zero. And we will do this through the whole file. So I'll let this run. You'll see the numbers keep cycling, and any time the, the, the second digits of our two sums here gets past, nine it goes to 10 or, or more it'll immediately get set back to zero i don't think it can go to 20 in all honesty so anytime it goes past 10 it'll will knock the one back down to zero until we get to the end of the file we then have our final checksum for the first two digits which is 900. once it is we're going to take those those values so it's a zero uh for i believe the for the, the second digit to zero and the first digit is a nine. So we're gonna end up putting into our checksum nine. And remember it needs to be negative as well. So the second digit ended up being a zero. That's why it's not zero nine, but if it was anything else, it would be, you know, if the second digit should be a two, then it would be two nine. So it, this is minus zero nine. That's the first two digits. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat that process one more time doing the other two digits. So now, for example, uh, we've got 704. These are the third and fourth digits that we're going through now. We grab the the one and the nine here, put it into this format and add it to our sums here. And that gives us 813. That 13 is more than 10. So that's going to become 803. And we continue that exact same process that we did for the first two digits. Using this double sum technique was able to cut down my cycle use in half, which is probably the best part of this whole this whole job for me. Uh, and then let's see, where is he? 
It's this one here. It's XB1. I don't want to lose track of him. Uh, and then this guy just, the, the, the trigger just got pulled. Let me keep watching XB1 and then it will reset real quick so we can look at what the cleanup step. So XB1 finishes, here he is, this one right here. XB1 is going to finish his checksum and he's going to update it. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Up here. He's going to update it. So the first, the first two digits, like the thousands and the hundreds digits are a two one. And he's going to add that to our, our, I guess, subtract it from our current checksum minus 2109. That is our final checksum. That is the correct and proper checksum for our value. And what's going to happen is XB1 is going to link across 800 to cross this bridge into the internet. And as soon as he gets in there, he's going to run out of instructions. But even if I tried to execute instructions in here, he would end up uh, erroring out anyway. Uh, the moment they get up into the internet, those agents are going to die. They, they can't do anything up there. So this file is actually going to end up getting dropped off there. I realize I'm covering it with my camera. I guess I can move myself real quick. Oh, let's see, can I just do the whole, the whole, nope, that's my frame. <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. There you go. I'll go over here for a second. So you see, he's going to drop off that file there. Perfect. Uh, the other guys are also doing the exact same thing. They're all calculating the checksums for their, their respective packets. So I want to talk about the the cleanup case, the, the final the final packet. So let me get to let's get to here. So remember, this guy's listening. He's got a, a, a timeout of 48 cycles or at least 48 T cycles. And then once that's done, he's going to see, are you done reading? This guy was done reading successfully, so he's going to go. He's going to track down. He's currently got file 400. He needs to know which file he's going to have to pick up to clean up at the end. So he starts at 400. He's like, OK, this guy succeeded. That means the next guy is going to have file 401. And then he's going to go back to sleep and he's going to wait those 48 cycles again until it's time. Uh, it's time to listen. Are you done reading? This guy also finished successfully. He's going to be like, OK, now the next guy is going to have file 402. I'm going to go back to sleep and wait. So we'll go forward on that. That guy also finished. He got a full packet. So he's going to be like, OK, the next guy is going to have file 403. I'm going to go back to sleep again. Now you'll see on this time, X, uh, XB, the original XB, reached the end of his file. That means that the packet is smaller. X, XB5 here didn't get a full set of 30, but he's still waiting to try and get 30 values. The, the, the listener here, however, will wake up and say, hey, did you get your full set of 30? Realizing that he hasn't gotten the full set of 30, uh, it's time for him to go into cleanup mode. Uh, so the first thing that he's going to do is eliminate the guy who's holding the incomplete packet because he's stuck waiting on the t on the M register. He's never going to do anything. So we're going to eliminate him. We're going to pick up the file that XB, just regular XB, was reading from, and we're going to wipe that because we, do, we don't want to leave any trace behind. We'll leave no trace objective. And then we were tracking in our X register the file that the current guy that was reading is working out of. So we know that file 403 was the one the guy was working on. And you can see it is file 403. So we're going to pick that up. This guy is now going to become one of the checksum calculators like these guys that are sitting in the network right now. He's going to head over into the network uh, and he's going to try and start calculating the checksum of the file that he's holding. Uh, the only difference is because his X register is currently holding the, the ID of the file that he has. When he gets the IP address from XA, he's going to send over to XA his X value. You remember, the other guys were sending their X values. Those were zero. But now that XB is sending an actual value over, uh, XA is going to register that it wasn't a zero. And he's like, I'm done. That was the last one I needed to send over. So he's going to terminate because he doesn't need to pronounce the IP anymore. And that was important to do it that way because XB, since he's working on a shorter file, he might end up calculating his checksum faster than these guys who are sitting here. So they won't, He, if he ran a kill command to try and get rid of this guy, he might end up hitting one of these guys that's working on a checksum. So we use that M, the M listening to basically tell him you, you're done, you're done announcing what the IP is for us. So XB0 is now going to join the other guys and it's just going to calculate his checksum in the exact same way. So I'm just going to let this play and you'll see the packets being dropped off, each with their own like correct checksums. This one's minus 2109. That's the one we talked about in the first run through. 
Uh, I'll go up here where you can actually see them kind of doing their logic as they're calculating their checksums. There's another one sent through correctly. And I think XV0, you know, our listener, is actually going to finish his checksum first. Maybe not. Yes, okay, he finished his checksum first. So this guy, if this guy is taking longer because he has a full packet of 30, well, uh, the other guy had a smaller one. But we ended up getting all of our data sent over, the checksums calculated correctly, all of the addresses that we need. Awesome, we did it in about 635 cycles. I'll let that all run through. You can see these files just getting all dropped off. You'll see that they definitely get bigger. I think it ends up being, uh, I don't think it goes past eight packets. Oh, nope, I think I saw a couple that get to nine. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot. But there you go. We have we have uploaded ourselves to the internet. We are now free of the of the simulation. We've broken out of the matrix. Congratulations to all of us. And that is that is the end of the jobs in Exapunks, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed working your way through it. Hopefully, you were able to learn a few tricks on your own. Hopefully, if you're if you're driven to do it, try and uh, Try and optimize them in ways that you want to. I was going for low cycles, but I definitely could have uh, had low, lower cycles on some of the jobs I did. Other people will try and go for minimizing the size and the activity as well. You know, size is how many lines of code did it take you. Activity is how many links and kill commands you end up doing. And so some people will try and minimize those uh, statistics as well. Uh, but Exapunks was... It, it was a bit rough for me at some points. I would get a little uh, a little obsessive about some of the problems, trying to figure them out the way I wanted to. Uh, but it was a really fun game to work through. Uh, the, the puzzles, are they scratch in a way that made me want to become a, a computer programmer to begin with. So hopefully you guys had some fun with it as well. Uh, I don't know if the company behind this game is making any more. I think they announced one of their games as their last game. I, do, I, do, I wish I knew more about what that meant, but they have made other games that work in a similar way. They, the company, the game developer is called the Zactronics. So if you liked Exapunks, take a look at some of their other, their other games. You'll definitely find some that are, that are interesting to you. Uh, but that is going to be it for me, though. So thank you for, uh, for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next game. See ya. Bye-bye.